I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the research that we do here in the Department of Microbiology and Immunology at the Loyola Medical Center. And in our lab, oh, we're interested in virus infections. One of the things to remember is that viruses are a very, very small, vastly smaller in terms of what they carry around than whole organisms or whole cells. Despite their smallness, uh, they pack in a tremendous uh, information capacity, if you will, capacity to um, corrupt cells into uh, becoming virus-producing factories, if you will. In our research, we're, we're really interested in this virus entry process. Uh, I mentioned already that uh, viruses, when they're outside of the body, uh, they can't really be considered living. They don't have any way to generate energy on their own. The answer can be understood in kind of a sort of protein biochemical ways. The surfaces of viruses have proteins on them that uh, are storing energy. And that energy then gets released at the right time in the right place, right as the virus is at the surface of the cell. Ultimately, the membranes of the cell and the membranes of the virus, they're one and the same. And a hole forms between virus or infected cell and target cell. And once that hole provides a portal for the entry of the viral cargo, the viral genetic material, into the cell and then voila, that new cell is then infected. Many, but not all viruses, are inactivated, that is, their ability to infect new, new, new individuals is, is eliminated uh, through things as simple as hand washing. Uh, SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And this syndrome, as you may know, uh, arose around 2003, 2004, not that long ago and was found very quickly to be caused by a virus called a coronavirus. Those are the viruses we study. So SARS is a zoonotic virus because SARS-like viruses can be found in bats uh, and in uh, certain exotic animals that are marketed in China. And it is quite likely that from bats and those exotic animals, the virus is transmitted over to people and cause disease. So the question kind of arises, how are we going to recognize these kinds of viruses in the animal population? How are we going to know which viruses actually are those most likely to get into people and cause disease? Think of a rare mm, offspring of this SARS-like virus as being capable of gaining a foothold in people so that the virus can transmit from the lungs of one person to the lungs of another. When the virus gets into the lungs, it can really cause quite a bit of devastation in part through directly infecting the lung tissue, the lung epithelia, but probably much more so in causing untoward immune responses that cause the lung to fill up with fluids, cells, immune cells and fluids. And that filling up of lung, um, the lung cavity with fluid obstructs breathing, of course, and there's the symptoms are acute respiratory distress. Uh, from the time of infection to the time at which uh, severe disease occurs is a week to two weeks. You know, understanding all these transitions has been really uh, helpful uh, in a clinical sense because out of all this understanding, which has uh, been obviously a community effort by many, many virology labs, has given rise to uh, certain therapeutic antiviral agents that block virus infections right at this entry stage. I don't think that we'd be in a position to, 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 to come up with these kinds of infection blocking agents where we would not first understand uh, how the virus entry process occurs in the first place.